Okay, so truly the name of my title here, let's multiply and simplify radical expressions. A couple of approaches again, unfortunately, uh, you might say. Um, one of the simplest ways is to take the value under the radical, called the radicands, and multiply them together. The product rule for radicals says that I'm allowed to do that. So 5 times 10 is 50, and this is equal to the square root of 50. And then I kind of look at my list and I say, oh, 25 goes into 50 evenly. I'm going to now think of that as 25 times 2, and that right there is equal to 5. Can't do anything with the square root of 2, and I'm all done. Another approach would be to say to yourself, well, this is already prime. Let's break that into its prime factors. And so let's bring the square root of 5 down, and 10 is 5 times 2. And then you can say, well, I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is just 5. I have two of those factors under the radical. So that's just equal to 5, and then the square root of 2 is on its own. So I can either multiply them together and then break them apart, or I can break them apart first. So the other example that I have might lend itself as well. So let's see, let's square root of 15 times the square root of 6. I think I'll, I'll go this way. Let's um, write 15 as 5 times 3. And let's write 6 as 3 times 2. So you've got those products broken into their prime factors. And we have learned that a pair of those can come out from underneath the radical because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3. So that comes out in front. And this 5 times 2 is 10 under the radical. And again, what you are doing is simplifying that radical expression so that later you can add and subtract them. It's a really, really important piece. Um, and so let's look at, you know, sometimes it's not all that convenient to break them into their prime factors. Here's an example. I could, in this case, just multiply 3 times 12 and get 36. And x times y is x times y and say, oh, geez, the square root of 36 is 6. So if you see that coming about, don't bother with breaking that into 2 times 2 times 3. Just bring those across and then say, well, the square root of 36 is 6. The x and the y, I cannot take the square root of them. They, they are not raised to an even exponent, nor is their exponent anything greater than a 2. They're just a 1 here and a 1 here, and I'm all done. But this last one that I have for this multiplying and simplifying, I'm just so inclined to multiply these together and then go about the process of simplifying. So I'm inclined to do that first. So 15 times 5 is 75. And m to the third times m to the second is m to the fifth. I'm adding the exponents. n to the second <coughs> times m n to the fourth is n to the sixth because I'm adding their exponents. And now I'm going to break this up into its, either its prime factors, or I might just go ahead and call 75 25 times 3, because the square root of 25 is 5. This m to the fifth, I'm going to call it m to the fourth times m to the first. And n to the sixth, I don't need to alter in terms of breaking it into factors because it's divisible by 2, its exponent is. This right here comes out as a 5. This right here comes out as an m squared, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. m squared times m squared is m to the fourth. This one comes out as n to the third. I even think I'm going to do this. I'm going to cross that off, that off, and that off, because I've dealt with them. And what stays under, under the radical, or the radicand, is this 3 and that m. And I'm all done. I have multiplied and I have simplified. This could be the toughest topic in working with radicals, is to simplify them.